Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Your Mark on the World show. Today, we've got some great guests, John Brennick from Caring Crowd. He's the leader there. And then we've got Joanne Chihuahua, who is the founder and director of the African Mothers Health Initiative. This is an episode you do not want to miss. Amazing stuff they're doing. So stick around. Welcome to the Your Mark on the World show with your champion of social good, Devin D. Thorpe. This episode is made possible via the support of our sponsors, including Johnson & Johnson's Caring Crowd. John, Joanne, welcome to the show. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thanks for having me. John, we're thrilled to have you as a sponsor of uh, the show. We, we're always grateful to have you and appreciate your support. And uh, we're excited to profile yet another uh, fantastic uh, project that's being funded on the Caring Crowd uh, crowdfunding site. Uh, uh, Joanne, uh, tell us a little bit about the African Mothers Health Initiative. African Mothers Health Initiative is a U.S.-based 501c3 that was founded by myself in 2008. I traveled to Malawi as a midwife. I'm a nurse midwife, and I was working in the public maternity ward then and um, had a, a lot of experiences. And one of the things that I, I observed was that when a woman dies after delivering a baby, that that baby will often go home to the village and die. Um, a beautiful, healthy, perfect baby deteriorates quickly and, um, as they say in Malawi, wants to follow the mother in death. And really that happens because there is very little resource in the community and there's no support by the government in order to help that family care for that baby. So um, with the help of family and friends from here, I set up a small nonprofit in the U.S., which provides some funding and oversight. And I then I um, set up a small nonprofit in Malawi, which actually does the work and um, cares for the moms and the babies. Um, so what we do, we identify babies who are more likely to die within their first year of life. So those would be um, babies whose mothers have died immediately after birth or within the first six months of their life when they're still dependent on breast milk. The families cannot afford the formula. They live in very basic, very basic um, homes. Um, you know, they're, most of them are subsistence farmers. And then also we in, um, enroll multiples in Malawi and Zambia. There's a significant amount of triplets and twins. And most of the moms, I think there was a small study some years ago saying that 80% of moms of these babies say that at least one of their children dies before the age of one. So we try and enroll all the multiples also in our catchment area. And then we also do low birth weight babies. So Malawi is um, unfortunately number one worldwide for percentage of births that are low birth weight. So you have these very, very tiny premature infants born often to women who are fairly malnourished themselves, and then discharge home into these very basic conditions. So we send nurses out into the villages um, to the babies that we've identified. They go and they do a monthly visit with the family. They do an assessment of the baby. They do an assessment of the home, assessment of the community. They do health education of the family, um, teaching the family what signs to look for, what might mean their baby is sick and they would need to go to the hospital, and then trying to mobilize the community to support that child. So that's one of our projects. The other project that we have is a mother care project. So there's also women, in Malawi still has a very high maternal mortality rate, but even those women who survive their births, many of them have very catastrophic experiences. So, for example, a woman has been laboring for a very long time in her village, and finally, you know, baby's not coming, makes her way from her home to a health center, then from the health center to, you know, a hospital, the hospital to the referral hospital. By the time she gets there, she's lost her baby. Mm. Her uterus has ruptured. She has a surgery to remove her uterus, remove her baby, and um, often these women at that point are very, very ill. I mean, they have survived the birth of their lives, but not much else. And when they are discharged, they return again to an environment where they have to go and draw their own water. They have to plant their fields in order to survive and to ensure the survival of their children. So if a woman 
returns home and she's unable to do those things, she's still convalescing, you know, it's not only her health, but the, her, the health of her children and her family that suffer. So we send nurses as well to these women. The nurses will go out to the villages um, and provide up to six visits for a mom. And then at the end of her time, we also provide a small stipend. And I re mean really small. I mean, even $12 to do some sort of income generating project. So that could mean, you know, buying what she needs to make donuts and sell donuts just so that she has a little money um, to help herself and her family during that period of transition. Yeah. Wow. Powerful work that you're doing. John, when uh, Joanne submitted this project, what did you and the team of experts think of it as you saw this project and how it fit into the Caring Crowd ecosystem? Well, as you know, there's a group of public health professors who review every project, and this one is so clear. I mean, it's uh, registered nurses led by a registered nurse and midwife, well-trained uh, local stakeholders who understand the local culture and language and social situations. And um, I think this is one of the highest return on investment kind of projects that uh, are around. So, you know, $12 can make a huge impact. And uh, this is a very efficient organization as well. The money goes right out there. So um, every campaign, that submitted was, you know, very quickly approved. Yeah, and that's great. So, uh, Joanne, have you completed some projects, uh, funded some projects on Caring Crowd before now? Because you've got one right now that you're in the middle of raising. Yes, we have. We have um, had several successful projects. Actually, last year we had, um, we were able to purchase a new four by four vehicle for our project, which was huge. Um, our, we operate on a very small budget, so I should say, you know, AMHI here in the U.S. is really consists of a board and a bookkeeper, and that's it. And everyone on our board is a volunteer, and you know, um, our professionals volunteering their expertise and um, their time. And then our our real staff are the people in Malawi. So. Our annual budget last year, I think because of the car, including the car, was $82,000. So, so very, very small budget that we're operating on. And when we're, you know, subsisting on this level, it's hard to boost our funds by a significant margin. So Caring Crowd made that possible, that we were able to run campaigns, two campaigns specifically for a vehicle. And the vehicle that we were using in the field was 19 years old <laughs> and broke down frequently. And we have little video clips of people in the village digging it out of the mud <laughs> and our wonderful driver underneath trying to fix it, you know. Um, so anyway, this is wonderful now that we can we have this car because the, the roads in the villages are very poor, especially in the rainy season. Many of them are almost impassable. So you need a four by four. Um, so this has been a huge, huge uh, impact to our, to our project. That's great. Well, John, as you've watched Joanne with uh, Have Success on the platform, what have you seen her do that's an effective practice that other crowdfunders ought to be emulating? Well, she um, leverages caring crowd to first to her existing base. So um, as many uh, organizations or several organizations have told me, um, when they um, go into caring crowd, some of the supporters actually feel, wow, you pass all the re reviews to get on this Johnson Johnson sponsored platform. Um, wow, this, this organization is moving up in the world. And um, so um, she leveraged that. She leveraged the nature of uh, having the goal with a deadline and, um, uh, you know, very effective support and then uh, continuing with getting her supporters to reach other supporters. Yeah, fantastic. Great, great uh aspects there that people can uh, replicate as they do their own campaigns. Now, Joanne, tell us what you're raising money for now. You're about halfway to your goal of, is it $6,000? That's right. Um, we are raising money for formula um, at the moment. So 
this is always or often a very touchy t subject for many people. You know, we are very aware of the benefits of breastfeeding. I think uh, as a country and medically, you know, the, that's indisputable that the first option for any baby should definitely be a mother's breast milk. And a lot of people feel a bit uncomfortable. You see a campaign right there for formula, um, but it is very important in what we do. So these babies that we are caring for do not have the option. Many of them do not have any breast milk. Those are the babies who um, are orphans, so their mothers have died. And wet nursing, you know, I get a, a lot of questions about wet nursing. Why not, you know, find another breastfeeding mom and, um, you know, do as we believe that they did many years ago and have this mom nurse both babies. And there's a couple of reasons for that. You know, number one is that HIV is still quite prevalent in Malawi, and it's not something that you share with you, even with your family at times. And many people are very fearful that, you know, their baby would become positive um, by taking the milk of another woman. Second is, you know, malnutrition, is that these women, many of them are really living at the edge. I mean, uh, many of our clients do not have regular meals, and quite a number of them do not even have a meal a day. So we're talking about this woman who is barely keeping herself alive and then trying to provide milk for her child. You know, it's really, it's too much for her to be able to provide for multiple children. So that is, you know, that's also the case with the multiples. So, you know, these are women that continue to breastfeed. The moms have the twins and the triplets, and we, our nurses encourage that. We have really lovely pictures of our visits with the nurses there and the moms with the babies attached but the milk is, is just not enough to sustain these babies. So um, we, are, we are raising for formula. Right now we have 245 babies in our care, which, you know, in depending on your perspective, may seem large or small, um, but each of these babies represents a relationship with the nurses and represents a distance that the nurses have to cover in order to visit. It's not that they are all coming to one center, that each of these babies, they might drive an hour to reach there to see the wow. baby, their family, their community. So 245 babies we have, and a third of them are on formula. So, wow. you know, a tin of formula, I think for most women here who have had children, who have strolled down the grocery store aisle and looked how much that costs, you know, it's quite expensive and people are not really operating so much with even money. This is really, they, they plant their fields, they harvest them, that's what they survive on. If they have to buy shoes for their children or pay school fees, they often sell off their own food in order to have that cash on hand. Ah. So and I really wanna to say too, the thing I find most inspiring is I think, you know, there's, there's so many good organizations, there's so many good opportunities to share and to become involved in the world. And I feel like, you know, people want to feel connected to what they're giving to, to what they're donating towards, and also, you know, inspired by, by the cause. And I feel like my source of inspiration, and I hope that I convey this to our donors, is really the families and the women in Malawi who are caring for their babies and their sisters, um, their daughters, because they are willing to sacrifice everything for this individual. I mean, everything. They're willing not to eat so that this baby has a chance. They're willing to sell off their own food to buy that extra tin of formula, but it's, it's really not sustainable. So, you know, that's where we step in. We give just, you know, a moderate amount of support with the formula and these children transform. It's amazing. Some of these babies come into our care severely emaciated wasted, very tiny, mm. underweight, some of them below their birth weight when they're already a month old. I mean, it's really heartbreaking. But then, you know, just with a little education, a little formula, a support from those nurses and that compassion that they offer. And as John said, that real understanding, you know, these are Malawian nurses serving Malawians. Um, you see that baby the next visit, you know, you see this cheek starting to fill out and that is incredibly, incredibly gratifying. Um, and I'd like to also say, you know, that these families are incredibly gracious. They're so grateful for the help and the support. And um, I don't feel, you know, I feel like this is what we should do. You know, we should not have people in the world who have to live at this level of poverty. Mm -hmm. At this point, we should be able to care for everybody, but their gratitude is immense. 
And it's also really wonderful to witness that. Well, John, as you uh, reflect on your accomplishments there at uh, Caring Crowd, what are you most proud of having accomplished? Well, I think that's easy. So um, between the, the fact that we don't, Johnson Johnson pays for the operation of the platform, <clears throat> so there are no fees for use of the platform. Um, also, um, often we have matching funds. Right now there are matching funds available. So if you're inspired to um, make your dollars go a very long way and really impact lives living on the edge, um, Joanne's campaign is live now and your pledge will be doubled. And um, Great. so uh, Joanne and her team um, in Malawi are excellent at sharing some of the stories. So if you want to feel like you're part of the project and part of the organization and part of this incredible life-saving work, um, you can also uh, read some of these stories with pictures so you can see some of the success that you can be part of. Oh, that's great. That's, that's fantastic. Joanne, I, I, I'm intrigued by uh, your supreme level of education. Uh, you know, Ivy League undergrad from Brown. Uh, you, you studied nursing and midwifery at uh, the University of California at San Francisco. Um, you didn't learn this casually <laughs> and uh, I, I don't mean to be uh, uh, judgmental but I, I think some of us think of midwifery as uh, kind of an alternative approach uh, and yet you have studied this uh, right down the center of the barrel I and mean, you, you, you've come at this from the most scientific uh, medical approach. Um, tell us a little bit about the how you've been able to uh, transfer your skills to the midwives in in Malawi. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, I think what you've said is is very enlightening and representative of a lot of people. You know, many people in the states believe that you know think of midwives as doing home births and in the community, which there are midwives who do that. Um, I, I'm a nurse midwife, and which means I, it's the same level of education as a nurse practitioner. So I think that's something that's a little more familiar for most people. They have their physician assistant or PA when they go to their doctor or their NP. So um, it's, a, it's a parallel. So in the States, you know, I can provide all the care within a clinic environment. I can deliver women within the hospital. Um, and I could also choose to deliver them at home or a birth center if that was what I was doing. Um, so in terms of the, the knowledge sharing in Malawi, you know, I, it, it is a back and forth, very much a back and forth. And I going there, when I went there, was a very new, new midwife. I went there for the first time in 2005. And I learned so much from the midwives around me. I think, you know, I had a lot of the evidence-based practice in my head, but getting there and seeing the reality is another thing. And it's, you know, it is a very different environment in terms of the resources available. You know, here, a busy hospital, a very busy hospital with multiple obst uh, um, obstetric practices may have 500 deliveries in a year. There, this very basic hospital was doing 1,000 deliveries a month. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. So, yes. Um, so, you see everything and... Um, and gain a lot of experience very quickly. I think what I was able to share with the nurses, you know, and it, what we are able to do in this project is really slow things down and bring it back to the individual. So there, I think the nurses as well as the patients, you know, it's just about going down the row and making sure things are done, making sure women are checked and just the basics, you know, pretty much emergency obstetric care. But in this organization, you know, what we're really trying to provide is that compassionate one-on-one -on -one care and being very attentive and really working myself with the nurses, but then the nurses with the guardians and the, and the other patients about, you know, supporting their empowerment 
um, to recognize, to learn the things that they, they already know, really, you know, to really trust themselves and to be able to speak up for themselves. So the nurse is serving as advocates, you know, within the medical system. So if the baby is, is sick, that the guardian doesn't feel like, you know, if she knows the baby is sick, then no one tells her you go back home, but she really knows to advocate for herself and for the baby. And we do have, um, trips. I go to Malawi, try to go once a year. In the last several years, I've brought a few nurses with me. And so when we go, we also do kind of refresher trainings for the nurses in terms of um, just their their assessment skills and um, resuscitation skills and so forth. But it has, I have, I have definitely, definitely learned a lot from them as well. That's great. John, why is this work at Caring Crowd important to you personally? Um, I think everyone who watches your mark on the world um, feels they want to make uh, an impact for good. And so um, how fulfilling can this be? And we invite everyone to become part of the Caring Crowd family, um, part of the community. Um, we are also starting a Caring Crowd Ambassadors program. So um, working with Devin on that and um, just helping people uh, use Caring Crowd successfully. We, you know, we have a, last year we had a more than 80% campaign success rate compared to many other crowdfunding platforms that are in the 30s or teens. And that's because uh, we really care about everyone who uses the platform and wants them to have a positive and success, uh, successful experience. So, um, we, we all uh, associated with Caring Crowd really do care. So it's um, just personally fulfilling. Fantastic. Well, Joanne, what is your superpower? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't have a superpower. I think, you know, as I said, it's really just staying inspired by the people that I'm working with and working for. And I think, you know, when I go to Malawi and I, and I see the work that the nurses are doing, I feel so much pride and um, I feel so much joy, you know, to see the connections between the nurses in these communities. That's not something that you typically see between healthcare workers and, and patients, you know, healthcare workers typically are very overworked, very stressed and see, you know, maybe 80 patients in a day just to see the families laughing and chatting in this, banter that they have and the exchange and then the gratitude and the affection and also seeing that in the nurses, which I also haven't seen previously, you know, in the hospitals in Malawi, that they also feel fulfilled in the work that they're doing. That just gives me so much inspiration. And then I come back and like, okay, we got to do this. We got to make it bigger. So, yeah. I would say that, you know, that's the source of the energy. Oh, that's wow. great. Well, I want to thank both of you, John, Joanne, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. We, we wish you every success, John, in uh, solving all of the world's global public health issues. <laughs> and Joanne, we wish you success in your mission to uh, save all those babies in Malawi. It's great work. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for having me. All righty. Let's do some good. A Caring Crowd, we believe everyone has the power to make a difference. Through our crowdfunding platform for community health, we empower passionate people to drive real change. Whether you work for a nonprofit organization, volunteer, or want to get involved for the first time, you can post a campaign on Caring Crowd. Join us, because caring is where change begins. Thank you for listening. Devonthorpe's mission is to end extreme poverty, improve global health, and mitigate climate change before 2045 by finding and sharing the stories of those who are doing the most good. You can join with other listeners to accelerate Devon's mission by visiting helpdevon.org right now.